Hey, welcome back. So I finished up my mittens. Here they are. One and two. So I finished them up the other week. Pretty happy with them. And like I said in an earlier video, the blue part is my own hand spun and hand dyed yarn. And the other one was bought. And so now that the mittens are done, I am just trying out a few things with knitting. Here I'm knitting the seed stitch, which in French is actually called le point de riz. It's called the rice stitch in French. So this might end up being, I think, either a, a scarf or a cowl or something like that. I have two colors, so I have this color, then I have another more of a turquoise color. This is actually my own hand spun and hand dyed yarn too. So we'll see what it ends up as. So today I am going to do something a little different. I actually want to show you a song in French, but with all the copyright rules with YouTube, I'm guessing that I wouldn't be able to actually play it on the video. But I want to go through the lyrics of the song with you and then we can talk about some of the vocabulary and some of the grammar that we see in it. So I want to present to you today a song from Dalida. Dalida was a singer that was really well known in France, especially in the 1960s, 70s and 80s, but she is still really well known today. And even if you're not too familiar with French singers, you, you might have already heard some of Dalida's songs because she also sang in quite a few other languages too. And she was really well known internationally. So Dalida was born in Egypt, but, uh, but came from an Italian family. So this is what we want to see in the song that I'm going to present to you is the Italian side of Dalida. So the song is Gigi la Mahoso. So this is a really well-known song from Dalida, and I'd like to present it to you because it has a story with it. So it's like I'm going to present you a little story. We're going to look at some of the vocabulary and also some of the grammar points that we can see in it. So I will link below this video the lyrics and also a link towards the song. The song, you can listen to it right now or you can wait until after this video if you want. But it has a pretty fun, almost funny story to it, so let's check that out together. So the song starts out saying, Je vais vous raconter, avant de vous quitter, l'histoire d'un petit village près de Napoli. So this is Dali Doug, you know, ready for the story. And like it says, it's been set in Italy. Nous étions quatre amis au bal tous les samedis, à jouer et à chanter toute la nuit. So here we're starting to get some information about the characters in this little story. So we have four friends, quatre amis. So we have Giorgio à la guitare, Sandro à la mandoline, moi je dansais en frappant de tambourin. So as you can see with each character, they have an instrument. So as we can guess, together they form a band. And if we continue, it says, Mais tous ceux qui venaient, c'était pour écouter celui qui faisait battre tous les cœurs. So if you didn't know already, the word cœur is the word for heart in French. So, celui qui faisait battre tous les cœurs, it's like saying him who made all the hearts beat. So with that information, we kind of guess, might turn into a little bit of a love story here. So the song continues, saying, Et quand il arrivait, la foule s'écriait. So when he arrived, the crowd, which is la foule, the crowd cried out, Arriva Gigi l'amoroso, Croqueur d'amour, l'œil de velours, comme une caresse. So you don't necessarily need to understand every single word of this song to be able to understand what's going on. So you already might be able to pick out a few words here, like amour, velour, caresse. So you should be able to just get the idea that this character, Gigi, is a man who seems to be very popular, talking about love and attraction. So the song continues. Toujours vainqueur, parfois sans cœur. 
mais jamais sans tendresse. So again, same information here, just about Gigi. And then it says, partout c'était la fête quand il chantait. Then you have a line here in Italian. So now we get a little bit more information about this character. So it says, Gigi Giuseppe. Mais tout le monde l'appelait Gigi l'amour. Et les femmes étaient folles de lui. Toutes. So notice here the word full, that means crazy. That's the feminine version of it. The masculine version is fou. So être fou de quelqu'un means to be crazy about somebody. So here it says, toutes les femmes étaient folles de lui. Toutes. So all the women were crazy about this guy. So now we're going to have some information about a few of these women. And this is where the song gets a little bit funnier here. So first of all, we have la femme du boulanger. Boulanger, that means baker. So the baker's wife. La femme du boulanger. Qui fermait sa boutique tous les mardis pour aller. And so it says here that she would close the shop every Tuesday to go. And I think you can guess where she's going. And then we have la femme du notaire qui était une sainte et qui n'avait jamais trompé son mari auparavant. So the notary's wife, so it says here, who was a saint. So here we have a verb tense, which I already talked about in another video. It's called le plus que parfait. So it says, et qui n'avait jamais trompé son mari auparavant. So notice here that avait jamais trompé. So this is the plus que parfait. So like I said in the other video, the plus que parfait talks about a past event that is before another past event. So notice here in this context, when it says n'avait jamais trompé, so it's like saying she had never cheated on her husband before, but just the fact that it's the plus que parfait, that gives us the information that in a more recent past, she did cheat on her husband with Gigi. And then we have la veuve de colonel. So veuve is the feminine form of veuf, which means widow. So the colonel's widow. La veuve de colonel qui ne porta plus le deuil parce qu'il n'aimait pas le noir. So here we have the word deuil, which means mourning in French. When I say that, you understand I'm talking about when somebody dies and you're in mourning after. So you're in grief or grieving the person. So it says, ne porta plus le deuil. First of all, notice that this is another verb tense in the past, which is the passé simple. And like I said in an earlier video, le passé simple is used usually only in fictional stories today. So this is a good occasion for it to be used because this is a fictional story that is being told in a song here. So notice here the verb is porter, which means to wear. So it's kind of like saying to wear the mourning or wearing the grief. So you can understand somebody that is in mourning after somebody dies usually wears black. So this is what this is talking about. So she doesn't wear black anymore because il n'aimait pas le noir. Because he, so we're talking about Gigi here, he doesn't like black. So those are three of the main characters here. La femme de boulanger, la femme de notaire, et la veuve de colonel. So the song continues. Toutes, je vous dis, même moi, mais moi, Gigi aimait trop sa liberté. Jusqu'au jour où... So now our stories are going to get a little bit more interesting. So a little bit more action in our story after all this description. But it's notice here that it says that everybody likes Gigi. So even the person that's telling the story. But it says Gigi aimait trop sa liberté. So he really liked his freedom. So we're guessing that it was hard for her, the person that's telling the story, the narrator, to get close to Gigi. So like I said, we have jusqu'au jour où. So that's what life was in the village right up till the day when. This is what this means. So now this is the rest of our story. 
Une riche américaine à grand coup de « je t'aime » lui proposa d'aller jusqu'à Hollywood. So you can maybe see some words here that you can kind of recognize. So it's a riche américaine. Je t'aime. Proposa. From the verb proposer. Aller jusqu'à Hollywood. So a rich American woman that seems to have fallen in love with Gigi and tells him to go to Hollywood with her. Tu seras le plus beau de tous les Caruso. Lui disait-elle jusqu'à en perdre haleine. So the word haleine is breath. And you have perdre here, which means to lose. So to lose breath. So you can kind of understand that this means that she kept repeating to him, repeating to him that he will be famous there in Hollywood. And that would be a really good idea for him to go with her. Nous voilà à la gare avec tous nos mouchoirs. So, la gare is the train station. Mouchoir is handkerchief. So, we can guess everybody is emotional here because Gigi is leaving. This very popular man is leaving this small town. Le cœur serré, ému par ce grand départ. Serré means tight. So, your heart tight. So, you can understand that that means when you're very emotional. And that's what we have here, the next word, ému, which means emotional, or moved emotionally. Pourtant, on était fier qu'il dépasse nos frontières. So here we have an adjective. Fier means proud, and frontière is borders. So we were proud that he was getting out of the country and going across the borders, discovering new places. Gigi partait conquérir l'Amérique. Et quand il arriva, so when he's arriving now at the train station, then we have a repetition of the refrain here. Arriva Gigi l'amoroso, croqueur d'amour, l'œil de velours comme une caresse, etc, etc, etc. Gigi. Quand le train a disparu, nous sommes tous rentrés chez nous. Et le lendemain, le village n'était plus le même. So right here we have the word plus which we don't pronounce the S because it's a negation. So with a negation, we never pronounce the S on plus. But if it isn't a negation, you might hear plus. I already have a video about the pronunciation of plus, so go check that out if you want more information. So this means that the village was no longer, this is what the ne plus means, no longer, so the village was no longer the same. Le village n'était plus le même. And notice here we have the word tous, which kind of means in this context everybody, or all, as in we all. And notice that here you pronounce the S because it's not followed by les. Because if we had something that was like tous les hommes, or tous les jours, or things like that, then you don't pronounce the S. But here, when it's alone just like this, you have to pronounce the S. La femme du boulanger refusa d'allumer son four. So the baker's wife refused to allumer means to light or to turn on. So she refused to turn on her oven. La femme du notaire, par désespoir, prit plusieurs amants. So this is the woman that had never cheated on her husband before, but now she's so distraught from emotion that she has taken, that's the word pris, several lovers. That's what amant means. And we have la femme de colonel, de la veuve, the widow, ferma ses persiennes et reprit le deuil pour la seconde fois. So she closed up all the windows in her house and, and restarted her grieving or her mourning but we can guess that this time it isn't for her late husband, but it's now for Gigi. Oui, le village avait bien changé. Et moi? So the song continues a little bit more now, so we're going to find out what happened to Gigi exactly. But I have to go right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit of a series. So I'm going to make another video to finish up the song. Then there's actually a second song 
that continues the story. So I will show you all of that in a couple more videos coming up. Like I said, go listen to the song, go look up the lyrics, try to understand it, and I will see you in the second part of this series.